So I've been pretty excited for this video for a while because I've been very interested in V Rising since it first entered early access a solid two years ago. And today I'm actually playing the 1.0 update of the game that features multi-level castle building, completely revamped building mechanics as well, in addition to tons of new content and tweaks. What you're looking at here is a castle that I built with two of my college buddies and it's a work in progress. It's not perfect, but we have all sorts of stuff set up for optimizing crafting stuff, for building out our characters into more powerful vampires, and it's been going pretty well. Now, if you're not familiar at all with V Rising, that's totally fine. Hopefully, this video will give you a better idea of what the game is. Basically, it is a game in which you are playing a vampire. Hello there. And you gain power by improving the gear that you have equipped, which is why the big gear level is put right there in your uh, menu front and center. With a higher gear score, you can take on more and more powerful bosses that each have their own little perks or items that might be useful. You can see when you kill this guy, you get this like fishing pole and then also a frost spell point so you can get a new frost spell. Same with taking on the ferocious bear. You get to actually go into bear form as you can see here, transforming into a bear, which is just kind of cool because why not? <laughs> but as I mentioned, you can actually craft a whole castle if you want to and level it up, gain all sorts of things to improve your gear or your standing within this little uh, world that you can either privately host or play on like public servers against other players. And, and you can see you can cut down wood, collect plant fibers, stuff like that, all sorts of copper ore, quartz, whatever you need. And so it mixes vampiric kind of action RPG stuff with survival mechanics to create a hybrid that is actually quite addicting. Obviously right now I'm playing an early access version of the 1.0 update. So they don't have like all the servers public or anything. So I just created a new save that I'm hosting myself that my friends and I could play on. And we were anticipating maybe putting in like an hour or two. We accidentally played for five hours. <laughs> in one night because it was just so addicting. We just kept going and kept going and kept going. It was awesome. And I've thought that this game had potential for a very, very long time. It was going through a few waves of improvement and stuff. You can actually see two of the little bosses are fighting each other right now, which is, that's just kind of cool that they ran into each other. Uh, I didn't realize they could do that, but they can. Two bosses are fighting each other. That's awesome. But what I was saying is that I've thought that this game looked great for a while. It had some quirks in early access. There were some issues with like building and crafting stuff, but they've completely rebuilt sections of the game to improve it and to address the concerns from those early access players, which is precisely what you want from an early access game. Like for the devs to actually listen to the feedback of their player base. And that's exactly what they've done here. Even adding controller support for the first time, which is something players have been asking for for a while. So if you are somebody that likes playing these games on controller, you can do that. And I will also mention that the game is coming to PlayStation 5 later this year. And as you can see, I'm going to suck some, some brute 78% blood, which gives me those status effects and makes me stronger because I'm a vampire, you know, as it, as it do be do, I, I do be a vampire unapologetically. Now, because I've thought that this game looked so good for so long, I was really excited when Stunlock Studios reached out and offered to sponsor this video so that I could share it with my audience because I was like, yeah, give me an excuse to talk about this game and play it, like, please. But as always with these videos, I clarified that I'm allowed to say whatever I want, positive or negative about the game, even though we're being sponsored to do this video. And they agreed. They said, absolutely, be upfront, be clear and honest. Don't say anything you don't believe. And props to them for doing that, because not all publishers or studios are comfortable sponsoring a video where you might have negative things to say. They're just lucky because I... I happen to really like the game. <laughs> but to be clear, it hasn't been like a perfect experience. There have been some quirks. Like you'll see, we have a, an objective up here in the top left that says construct and interact with a way gate. That is still there, even though I've built a way gate for some reason. I'm able to complete objectives after that point 
but this always stays on my screen for some reason. I, I don't know why. It's a little weird. And I have run into some other little bugs kind of related to that, where occasionally if I'm playing with other players in the server, I just won't be able to complete building projects. Like I, I won't be able to place things that I can build, even if I have all the materials, even if I was just doing it five seconds before randomly, it will just stop letting you in interact with the build mode and you can't even move stuff. You can't even break stuff down. It just freezes up. Thankfully, quick reloading just happens to fix it, but that is something I've encountered. And I don't know if that's going to be fixed when 1.0 officially launches, since after all, I'm playing an early access version of that, but Time will tell. And I probably don't have to say this, but I'll just put it out there. Because I'm playing an early access version of this game, I don't know what like server infrastructure will look like. I don't know what that will be like when the game officially launches in 1.0. So it could be way better, could be a little rougher. I, I, I just don't know at this point. But what I've seen so far is that when I'm playing with friends, we don't have any issues, rubber banding, nothing like that at all. The only issues I've come across are related to build mode randomly not working, and then also these objectives sticking around longer than they should. Even when you can complete objectives that come after this one in like the sequence of objectives, just for some reason, this is still on my screen. But you see up here in front of me is one of the bosses that we can take on. This is actually my favorite one that we've fought on this save file so far, Finn the Fisherman. And if I go over here, you can see he's level 32, five gear levels lower. And there's a handful of others that I've already fought even above him. We've taken these guys out. We haven't fought Quincy the Bandit King, that's somebody we're actually fighting tonight when all of us hop on again because we really like this game. <laughs> but I thought that this could be a good little demonstration of what one of these boss fights are like. You see, he points at me with the big old fish, that's his weapon. They're all very unique. There's a couple that are like maybe, you know, the same archetype. They might both use large swords or they might both use certain types of of spells or something but all of the encounters are in their own unique spaces they have their own rewards and stuff and some of them like this one have really cool mechanics that are unique to them which in this case is like this guy that pulls open a bunch of, of fish and creatures to fight alongside him which is just really really cool and i love his running animation i'm just gonna throw that out there but as you can see it can get like a little a little crazy pretty quick a lot of stuff starts popping on screen and when you're playing this with like all of your buddies it can start to get pretty hectic and chaotic i'll be real you know this is a good bit easier than it normally is since i am a good few levels above this a solid five levels higher but it, it like when you're at the actual level that this is designed for it's it's pretty dang tough i'll tell you what and then i'm going to extract his life and when you do this the first time you get all of the rewards and you get the power-ups the spell slots whatever else you might be getting and you see just like that pops I get the Unsullied Heart, everyone else drops, and I did it, hooray. Now, I mentioned that there's some like customization and ARPG elements to this game, and that is often tied up in the spell book and the different things that you can equip as secondary weapons or tools uh, under your, your purview. So as you can see, I've got Illusion Magic, I've got Unholy Magic. This one is, is like a cool AoE that I can pop, and I can just click and drag it in if I want to use that so for example i just did that there and now my r ability is this little thing right there and when that pops if it happens to kill somebody or for various other ways that i could affect it it will spawn little like skeletal minions to fight alongside me a la diablo which is kind of cool i don't know about you guys but in diablo i tend to be uh, all into necromancy that's sort of my bread and butter because i just love all the aoe's i love all that stuff and I eat it up. These guys are way too powerful for me. <laughs> the wolves are usually like the easiest things to take down. And these guys are mighty scary. In addition to all of that, you can make the combat what you want. You can see I also have like a little crossbow equipped here. And so if I want to fire that and use that as my weapon, 
I could do that. If I wanted to be a ranged based player, I could do it. I, if I wanted to use like axes or a spear for fighting, I could do it. It's all just based on how you want to play. And I, I kind of love that. Now that I'm back in my wee little castle after all of that, I'll just show you kind of how the building mechanics tend to work. You can see Corey's passed out over there. Hard night work and I'll tell you what. But just by tapping B, I can enter build mode. And if I do this, you can see I can select walls and I can assign these wherever I want. Now I'm gonna go up to the very tippy top of the castle and I'm going to finish building my bedroom suite. So right here, I'm gonna do a little window wall from the window to the wall. I'm also going to extend this out, make a little hallway and maybe i'll leave this as like a, a balcony maybe that's what i'll do but i'll enclose it with a wall just like that and you can see when the when the room is actually enclosed it actually automatically builds the roof on top so now when i go in there i have a little bedroom suite and from there there's all sorts of ornaments and decorations you can put up if you want you can see pillar ornaments all sorts of different stuff if i so desire in addition to carpets which i will happily place because this place would be looking a little shabby or here i can place a mirror and i could use that to change my appearance you can see i can go oh, this distinguished standing mirror i can press that and then alter my character if i so desire i don't have to like start a new save to do that and then the rest of these rooms you can see we're going to use for the other people that i play with Corey and caleb so they're each going to get their own rooms so you can really customize it to your heart's content now as i mentioned this is a private server so you might be wondering okay well what's the deal with public servers what does that look like is that more or less crazy uh it's it's more crazy you see if i go to this little thing this is the castle heart and if i click on it you can see castle powered and fortified for five days 11 hours because we have a bunch of this blood essence powering it at the moment well you see that protects your castle from what's known as decay which is a little mechanic that they have here because you see normally when you're playing on a public server there's a bunch of other players running around in here and they might be building little castles themselves over here on this plot or another one over on that plot or over here or over there and uh, i forgot it's sunny outside i have to go inside that's right there is a day night cycle and if you're <laughs> not in shade and you're out in the sun you can take damage because you're a vampire you see you stand out in the sun you start to get a little crispy and then you go back into the shadow and you're fine it's a fun little mechanic but normally if your castle is undefended and unfortified it will go into a state called decay and when a castle decays it is then vulnerable it breaks apart it can be claimed by other players raided blah 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 it gets pretty crazy if you are not actively working to protect your castle and that's if you're playing again in those public servers if you want to play in private servers just do your own thing make your own rules you can absolutely do that that's what i'm doing here and in this case it's just me and my friends playing so we don't really have to worry about all that stuff but if you want to go out into public servers you can absolutely do it too and you can see because it's daytime i'm running through i can still explore the world i just have to stick to the shadows wherever possible otherwise I will turn real crispy real quick but right up here is actually where my very first castle was and you can see it's all decayed it's all dilapidated and falling apart up here is where we built most of the stuff and you can see it's seen better days i'll tell you what but if i were to put blood essence in right there all of a sudden we're good we're good it is rejuvenated and it will be good for a while and that is just sort of a taste of what this game has to offer i mean while you're out exploring doing stuff you'll be blown away at just how much there is tucked away in this game i mean there are all sorts of little bosses all sorts of things to discover and i mean like i said me and my friends are eating it up we can't get enough of it and we're gonna keep playing more and more and more because it's not often we find a game that we all like playing together honestly like it's it's kind of tough to find a game that a handful of people like playing 
together. And this is one of the rare occasions where we've actually played a game and gobbled it up. And uh, I think that's awesome. I'm gonna finish this corpse pile off because I will not let him best me. I swear. But you can see this can lead to really interesting combat encounters if you don't get eaten, where if you are out and about during the daytime and you get jumped by a boss or by just random enemies, you have to be pretty careful. Otherwise, you get caught in the sun and the boss fight just got a whole heck of a lot harder, I'll tell you what. There we go. And he's done. You are done. And like I said, they've added a lot in this 1.0 update alone. So even if you played the game in early access like a year and a half ago, you can get into it now and experience all of the crazy improvements that they've made. They've even done some crazy stuff like a crossover with Dracula and Castlevania just in general, all new magic systems, brand new weapons and stuff if you want to check those out. Like it's just crazy and it's once again just another great example of how great early access can be when you put a game into early access and then you get a community starting to build around your game and they provide feedback to you and most importantly when they listen to the feedback and improve the game with those notes and ideas and that's exactly what's happened here the game was pretty good when it launched in early access. Now, I think the game is pretty great. Of course, there's still some little bugs and hiccups that I'm hoping are fixed in the full 1.0 update. Nothing like super egregious, just mildly annoying things that will occasionally pop up. But the nice thing about bugs is that they can be fixed. And when a studio has already shown that they are very actively improving the game and working to fix all of that stuff, quickly, I am much more confident that they're going to be able to actually deliver on the full vision of the game with the 1.0 update. And in addition to all of that, they've already shown that they're doing expansions like Secrets of Gloomrot, which you can see is a free V Rising expansion. Imagine that, a free expansion. Enter a massive new zone with two unique areas, twist it in the pursuit of cruel science and raise your multi-level castle. Navigate polluted valleys and lightning scorched highlands to face the mutated experiments and mechanical wonders spawn from the twisted imaginations of the transcendum. Travel to the heights of Gloomrot and face their greatest creation, the ultimate weapon of war. And it's just entirely new areas that they've just added. So I can only imagine what this game is going to look like as the months and years go by and they add all sorts of new stuff that just makes it better and better. So again, shout out to Stunlock Studios for sponsoring the video and giving me a chance to play this early and share it with all of you guys. If you're interested in the game, check it out at the link in the description box below or in the pinned comment. Again, I've had a great time with the game and so have my friends and we've just been eating it up both metaphorically and, uh, I guess literally, but still metaphor. We're not literally eating the game, but like, you know, vampires. It's a messy analogy. Okay, we'll move on. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching. I love you all desperately, and I'll see you in the next video. Hugs and kisses. Bye-bye.